Welcome to Fitzarns Property Exchange, hosted by Pearl Skeltimer, designed to keep you informed and captivated about the South African residential property market. Subscribe to our channel today and enjoy conversations with some of the most influential, innovative and interesting industry experts, stakeholders and scheme executives as they render input in today's property market. Hi, good day. So nice to talk to you again. And guess what, listeners? We have a very, very interesting guest. Louise Martin is the CEO of Estate Living, a media service that has grown from producing magazines for some of South Africa's first credential estates to providing a turnkey communication platform that includes print, digital, eventing, podcast, videos, and sales generation channels but I'm going to allow her to elaborate on this. Um, what we're going to talk about today is property investment. Is it still worth your while? So, Louise, welcome. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you so much for having me here today. Yes, so Estate Living has uh, been working within residential communities and mixed-use developments for a number of years, and we've uh, developed out a number of channels and ways in which we can communicate with individuals that are looking to purchase into residential communities or individuals that are already living in communities looking for more information. And, um, you know, working with residential communities, developers, management, property investment is obviously, you know, on the forefront of everybody's mind. That's why they that's why they're even there is they're either investing in the property or looking to invest in property. And um, and we've really found that over the years, folks who are living within residential communities generally look to invest within residential communities, uh, whether it's for a pure investment perspective or whether it's for, um, you know, for a second property or, you know, maybe a home for their, their student, for their child or, or parent. Okay. Would you start by giving us a definition of what you would say property investment is? Um, I think it's it's a, a bit of a broad a broad definition. So bearing in mind that uh, my speciality is residential community spaces, and there are very different forms of property investment. Um, but we're gonna but I'm gonna speak specifically to investing within a community. I would appreciate that. That's that's most of our clientele, so that would be that's great. Most, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, sure. That's fortunate then. So the I would say that from our side we look at in property investment by definition would be to purchase a, a property or a unit, whether that's as a primary residence, so an investment into your lifestyle, or whether that is for a secondary pure investment product where you're planning on generating an income from that property or you're planning on putting that property in a position where one day you can perhaps move into it in the case of a retirement property, or perhaps you've got a family member living there now, and then in the future you would reside on the property. So oh. the investment, the idea of the investment would be that when it got to the point of you selling the property, that you've got some type of capital appreciation, so the value of the property has increased, and in selling it you make a profit from that sale. That's the goal. I was just thinking that that is actually almost the most important decision anyone can take is purchasing property. Absolutely. I think it's I think it's typically known as one uh, for most people known as one as the largest investment that they will make, which is their property. And you know, mm -hmm. it it is one that for many of us we spend 20 or 30 years paying the bank back for. So definitely. So it definitely governs your lifestyle for a, a number of years for the vast majority of us. So choosing the right property, whether it's to live in or it's for an investment perspective, um, is crucial to, and specifically within residential estate living, choosing the right estate for your family is crucial um, or for your investment is crucial. Of course, um, for a moment there, I was. I thought you were talking about a marriage because the definition more or less sounds <laughs> the same. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> what would you say the advantages are of um, property investment? 
Look, I think it's about timing. I mean, and I think it's we have to be very mindful about approaching the subject because not every property investment has been a fruitful one. So you can, you know, there are many cases where people have purchased a property uh, when the you know the property rates were the prices were quite high in the hopes to to make a profit and unfortunately in these cases they've sold too late or too soon and and they haven't seen it that way but if we look at a if we look at it from a kind of very sort of uh, conservative perspective if you are a, a young person and you're looking to invest some money, you know, purchasing a property and you've done your research, purchasing a property within the lower price range, something that is affordable, that you can afford your return on it, you can afford your bond repayment. You've done your research, you can see that the area has got potential from a growth perspective and you look at property investment as a slightly longer term investment. So it's not something that you... Uh, are going to buy and sell immediately. There are cases where people do that as a profession. They flip properties, but let's just talk about the nor you know most of us that that not necessarily playing that game. So you select your property and you're looking and maintain keeping that property for five to seven years to be safe, and then. You know, and, and, and I'll speak from experience, you keep your first property for five to seven years and then perhaps your your circumstances change and you need to maybe move somewhere closer to schools or into a different area. You then start looking for the next property. You can sell your current one. The profit that you make from that, you then put into the next property and you're able to buy something perhaps in a better area or a larger home or closer to schools, depending on your requirement. And that's sort of how you conservatively can develop within the property game, you know, just by by slowly, incrementally improving, selling, buying, selling, buying, and making shrewd and uh, well thought about decisions uh, rather than just, um, you know, just quickly buying and quickly selling. Do you think that there's an age limit to entering into this kind of investment? Should one start in your early 20s? Should you start when you are about to retire? Or I, I don't think it's an age limit. It's access to funding. So bearing in mind that as you get older, it becomes more tricky to access the funding for a property investment. So if you have the finances available and you're wanting to do a cash purchase or you, you, you know, you're looking at investing your money, perhaps something that you could leave in your estate for your family, then, you know, then, then that's a slightly different ball game to a young person who is getting into the property market. You know, I think the question is, is really, what is your affordability like? Nowadays, the rental on many, many properties are quite high. Um, you know, I, I sort of see that, you know, the rent is high in the area, in the areas you would uh, like to live and the property prices are high in the same areas where you would like to live. That's always yeah. the challenge. You know, whenever you find something, it's always just that little bit outside of your price range. You know, I think, I think that is, <laughs> that we all face that challenge or most of us face that challenge. You know, so I don't think it's age specific. It's about what it is that you want. You know, what what is it? What is your plan from for your for your finances? And if you have the affordability, and I we often see it. You know, folks that own properties within communities, perhaps up north in Johannesburg or in, even in um, KZN. You know, they sell those units and they look to retire down in the Western Cape, for for example. Yeah. That's the last story. That's a property transaction that's happening with somebody who's in their, you know, their fifties or sixties or seventies even, um, mm. and that's an investment that they're making because the chances are they're having to downscale from a large home in Johannesburg to a smaller one in the Western Cape. But then the return that perhaps the capital growth that their Western Cape property might see could be higher than if they had perhaps kept their Joburg property. So it really just yeah. depends on on who they are, what their portfolio looks like and how much money they've got at the end of the day. All right. So I think we've already touched on this, but how do you know that you're ready to invest in property? Um, how do you know if you're ready to invest? Um, I suppose that's like saying, how do you know if you're ready to have a child? You never know. <laughs> you know you're just... 
you just kind of hope for the best. And no, um, I think that if you, you know, it, I think it's different for every single person. Personally, I had a goal. I wanted to own my first property before I was 30. That was my personal goal. For other people, it might, you know, might be a little bit different. I think that, you know, when I turned 30, it was a number of years ago, and perhaps it was easier then to get into the property market, especially here in the Western Cape, the prices were a lot lower. So it really just depends. But you do sort of, as a younger person, you reach a threshold where you just kind of become tired of paying off somebody else's bond. And, you know, just for the lack of a better term, better way of saying it. And you start to realize that the opportunity is there and that if I start to, you know, put my money into this property that I like and that I could live in perhaps, I, you know, I would be able to sort of see a return. And if I need to sell it, I can sell it an upscale or, or, you know, whatever my plans might be. But I don't think there's a time when you're ready or not ready. You know, are you ever ready to have a child? Are you ever ready to to, uh, mm. to make these types mm. of commitments? You know, you, one just has to think about it logically. And if you have the affordability, perhaps you're pooling resources with other family members or friends and, and you look at the, the, you know, logically, if you invest in a property, you're paying off a, a bond, which is similar to perhaps a rental uh, amount. And if you had to sell that property, would you be gaining or losing? Obviously, there, there are kind of rules around property investment, the location, price, uh, access to facilities and amenities. But in general, Mm -hmm. if you do your research, you can see there is chances are there will be a capital growth on that property by the time you you sell it. Okay, so homework is basically the main thing. Would you suggest that the estate agent first suss out the client a list of questions, what exactly are the intentions for a specific property, whether they want to stay themselves, whether they want to rent the property, um, for how long do they intend um, to have this investment? Would that assist a prospective buyer? Um, I think your estate agent who is, in, in, in essence, an area specialist. I absolutely do think you can lean on the services of an estate agent when it comes to finding out information regarding the, you know, the potential return. So if you're purchasing a property and it's not going to be your primary residence, so you're looking to rent it out, There, it's very important to understand, you know, what the occupancy rate is going to be of the property, what return you can expect, what are the, you know, what is a fair price for the rental in that area? And, you know, how has that area, you know, sustained itself? So what's the transport networks, et cetera? So an area specialist like an estate agent can add valuable information and they can also advise you when it comes to accessing a third-party databases for information like Likestone and there's many others you can access information. Mm, right. um, driving the area, understanding the area. But it really depends on on, on the, who you are as an investor and, and um, you know, whether you – how involved do you want to be in the management of that property – um, once you've invested in it. Aha, uh-huh. now we get to the part that I'm specifically in. <laughs> let's, let's talk about sectional title investment. That is our um, field of expertise in the sense that we manage several sectional schemes. So how do I evaluate whether the deal is for me or not? And, and that specifically in terms of sectional title. What are the questions I'm supposed to ask myself? As an investor, what are the questions you're going yes. to ask yourself? Yes, pertaining, pertaining to sectional title specifically. Yeah. So, so the thing with a sectional title scheme, in my understanding, is a sectional title is the is it's a term used to how the ownership of that property. So you own a part of the property, a part of the the scheme, and other parts of the scheme are common property. So they shared property amongst all of the owners of the scheme. And the management of those shared properties is generally done 
through a, a board of uh, trustees or through a managing agent. So when I'm going to purchase into a sectional title scheme, I have to ask myself, am I going to live there as a primary residence or am I using it for short-term or long-term rentals? So if I'm going to go and look at a, a unit that I'm going to rent out, whether it's through a digital platform like Airbnb or through the internal solution that the, the, the development offers, um, you know, there it's, it, you, you've got to look at your location. So where is this, like, where is the sectional title scheme positioned? How has it been managed to date? This is very important, you know. Driving past the scheme is always a, a bit of a giveaway. You know, if the, <laughs> if the paint is coming off the walls and the building's falling down, chances are it's not managed very well. But mm -hmm. a lot of the time, it's not as obvious as that. So if you are going to purchase into sectional title, I think you do have the right, and I stand to be corrected, to get a copy of the last uh, meeting report so you can just get an understanding of how the how the scheme is being managed and is there a, you know, they are a sectional title management act does require the scheme to have, re, you know, um, money in its sort of purse for repairs and maintenance. So you just got to kind of make sure that all of the, you do your due diligence on how that scheme is governed. But whether you're purchasing into a sectional title scheme or a freehold scheme, wherever that development or unit might be, uh, you know, you still ask yourself the same questions of where is the where is the location, what is the, you know, access, what are the amenities around the location. So you do ask yourself those basic questions around how desirable that scheme will be to a potential individual who will want to rent from you. I think the other thing that's very important is if the scheme is sitting within a greater HRA, um, or if the scheme is sitting within a, you know, like a resort complex or whatever it might be, understanding the rules of the scheme is very important. You don't want to move in or buy something only to discover that short-term rentals are not allowed or, you know, you need a minimum of a, a, a two-week or three-week rental. You can't rent it over the weekend, uh, you know, through an, a digital service uh, and things like that. So the rules are very very important and and it, it's really worth your time to double check those rules and make sure see what process would need to be in place to change the rules so you'd also again don't want to purchase into a scheme only to discover you know at the next uh meeting you're not allowed to put your pet. yeah they've yeah. changed the rules and you can't wait it's, it's a, big, a typical typical situation um, I, will, I bought here because I thought I could bring my pit bull along and now I'm being told it's against the exactly. rules. Exactly. And, and, that, and, you know, you talk about animals, that, that comes up quite a lot. Check your rules out. You know, they often say you're allowed a medium-sized dog or you're allowed a, you know, a, a, a this or a that. But you need to mm. make sure you understand the definition of what constitutes a medium-sized right. dog. Because I've got I've got a couple of fatties, and <laughs> <laughs> we get that on a day to day basis, and the absolute disgust when um, the buyer finds out. But unfortunately, you were given the wrong information. This is how it works, and 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 even structural or minor changes to us to a loose standing section where owners think it's okay to enclose the um, veranda um, and not knowing what the rules imply. So I am so glad that you highlighted that specifically. Um, I also think what is important, um, and that falls with your previous comment of affordability, is that you should know what are the current levies. Are there any special contributions to be paid for this planned future maintenance, etc.? What are the rates and taxes account on this? Because it very often happens that an agent is selling a property, but they don't enlighten all the, shall I call it, hidden costs that an owner is in for. And then it's, it's quite a disappointment. It's not what you thought you bought. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, it's, and although CSOS is around, it is still, you know, you, we still see a lot of, conflict 
you know, between homeowners, between uh, community management or trustees on a daily basis. I, th- I like the way you highlighted the levy and the special levy. So mm. a- as you know, the revision to the Sectional Title Schemes Act was put in place so that, that there was an element of protection against special levies. And that's why there needs to be a maintenance plan with a, a budget in place, which makes that very, very important. And if you're buying into a scheme, you've got to think of things like the roads, the parking areas, the, you know, the infrastructure. And I think nowadays, if you're also purchasing into a scheme, you need to ask yourself, what are the architectural guidelines of that scheme? Am I able to include uh, sustainable things like, uh, you know, solar power and water solutions? And those are are becoming more and more important and also more and more desirable should you wish to sell. So having a fiber-ready community is the number one and potentially solar, definitely grey water management, uh, water storage, depending on where you are, but I think water storage is going to become compulsory across the board. If you're looking to to live anywhere, yeah, I think water is an issue for everybody now. But uh, but yes, but and and of course, when I sell this property, um, what are people going to be asking for in five or ten years' time when I choose to make that sell? And I think these sustainable elements will definitely definitely be a draw card. Louise, thank you so much for that. Please tell us estate living the platform itself what can it offer my listeners so if they want information on a specific topic or possible investment opportunities how do they go about obtaining this information so louise exactly what is estate living what can it provide to our listeners So estate living is a resource for information and education around residential community living. So whether you're purchasing into a sectional title development or a normal freehold property or a mixed use development um, and you're looking for information, you know, how do I choose the right estate? How do I understand the rules? Uh, What's a hot property trend? You know, how do I... How do I manage relationships with my neighbors? So a wide variety of information that uh, that we create and curate that sits within our estate living website, so estate-living.co.za. And it's a wealth of information. So we, we work with the residential community market holistically. So we, we have content and information and opportunities for property developers for property management, uh, for homeowners and residents living within communities, and then, of course, individuals that are looking to invest within communities and haven't quite, don't really know their way around and are looking for those little bits of information that can assist them with their uh, decision-making process. So it's a, it's a resource, really. That's what estate living is. That's awesome. We need, we need access to such a forum, so I'm very excited about this. Thank you. You know, Estate Living was born really out of the need for that information. I, it, it's actually a, a little bit of a personal journey. A friend of mine purchased in a development and um, only to discover that the rules of this development were so strict that her child and her animal pets could not wonder around the development they couldn't go play on all of in all of the spaces and she said to me if only she had known that this was going to be a problem for her she would have purchased a unit in a different development that perhaps was more family friendly for her child and for her situation and and that's really what estate living helps you do is helps you find that information out so that you do make the right decision when you choose to make make that decision Okay, so basically your clientele includes prospective buyers, uh, homeowners, associations, estate managers, property developers, service providers, and who else? Uh, no, and yeah, investors, but um, and service providers and affiliates. So the businesses that are working with the residential communities um, already who are looking to grow their market share into these into the property sector we work with them as well so we help them 
package their products so that it's suitable for residential communities, whoever they're selling sort of to, so whether it's a a estate management or a property developer. So we help them with that and research around the communities as well. So often we people come to us and ask us for information and assist them with research and surveying and data collecting. And so it's quite an all-encompassing service that we offer. And it's because we are fortunate enough to have access to all of the sides of the market. So we get to hear what's happening on a daily basis, which, which we can able to share with our market as well. All right. So if I'm a an investor and I would like to have more information I visit your website and does that then direct me to either properties for sale or the service providers? Is it grouped in in specific areas? Yes. Yes, so so you can navigate your way around the website. So um, we have Estate Living Mauritius, which focuses primarily on our Mauritian... um, Aha! (laughs) <laughs> so, aha is that a good aha or not so um it's yes it's a good aha. <laughs> um so you know when, when you work with things every single day you forget about the the awesomeness of everything that you do so the the estate living mauritius is focuses on mauritius so there we would host you know information for individuals that are looking to emigrate or invest in Mauritius. So you'll find, you click on it and you'll find content stories that would say, you know, should you move your car? Should you, how should you emigrate? You know, who should you speak to, et cetera. And then they'll also find properties that are available, so developments that are available. We don't list individual units and properties on our site. It's not really a listing site. I I hope maybe one day we will be, but for now we would list the development. And then there is always a place where you can place your inquiries, send us your details, and then we would connect you with the developer themselves or whoever um, is representing that development. So it's a introduction to the developer and then you can sort of take the conversation from there depending on 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 what you're looking Mm. for so similarly on estate living um the estate living page if you are looking if you are a community manager or a sectional title manager or you know body corporate manager and you're looking for um, perhaps a, a supplier who could help you with your development um, somebody who rep- has a good reputation in the industry and is reliable, then often that you could look on our site and, and search via the category that you're looking for and it would list the suppliers that are working within the industry who are working with us as well. And then if you if you are a estate manager or a homeowner and you want to uh, find out some more information like, you know, I haven't paid my levy, is, my, <laughs> is the body corporate allowed to switch my electricity off, Uh, you know, those type of daily issues that come up, you can search our site and we hopefully will be able to provide you with information. And if not, you can send me an email and we'll connect you with somebody who can provide you with the correct information. Louise, that sounds absolutely marvellous and definitely something all of us need. Thank you so much for providing this platform. Before we close off, won't you please just repeat where they can find the information of Estate Living? Just repeat that website and page. So you can visit our site, which is estate-living.coza. Great. Louise, thank you so much for your time. Ladies and gents, we will definitely be talking again soon. This was Fitzans Property Exchange, hosted by Pearl Skeltimer. Not only do we keep you informed on the very latest in the property industry, we also empower by expanding your knowledge base. Make sure to visit www.fitzon.co.za to find out more about sectional title scheme management, letting, sales and trustee training. Remember to subscribe to our channel and follow us on all our social platforms.